Hi, this is Mrs. Slater, and we have two goals for today. First is to identify the parts of a right triangle. Okay, so this may be a little review, but anything that's opposite of the right angle, that side is called the hypotenuse. And the other two sides are called the legs. Okay, and then what you would need to know for the second goal is how to use RHL to prove triangles congruent, specifically right triangles. This now is our fifth way to prove triangles congruent. So let's look at the next slide. Okay, now you'll notice that the R is in parentheses. It's because the, the book uses only HL, but for your proofs and then in your work and your assignments, I would like you to use RHL because R is going to specify and keep it consistent with the other four that we have learned that we need to find that right angles have to be congruent as well. Okay, and along that note, the H, you need the hypotenuse on each triangle to be congruent, and you're going to need one of the legs, not both of them one of the legs have to be congruent to each other. So a picture would look something like this, where you have the right angle and they're already in your picture, and then uh, the hypotenuse, somehow you get those to be congruent, and then either one of the legs, so maybe those two would be congruent to each other. So that would be right angles, hypotenuse, leg, and we can say that it is congruent to each other. So let's try the first proof where we can use this theorem. So the first given says B is the midpoint of AC. And so in my picture, I want to put the tick marks. And then what does that tell me? Well, that two segments are congruent to each other. Make sure to keep the corresponding parts in the correct spots. And then we can say if two, or if a segment has a midpoint, then it divides into two congruent segments. Okay, now the next given. It says that A and C are right angles, and if they're right angles, we know that they are congruent to each other. So A is congruent to C because if two angles are right, then congruent. Okay, and then I'm going to also put that in my picture. And also angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent to each other. And I want to go ahead and put my next givens. That information is helpful because we know if angles, then the sides opposite of them are going to be congruent to each other. So we can say that BD equals BE. BE equals B. D, and the reason, if angles, then sides. Okay, and then we can conclude, because if you notice, we've got three different things congruent to each other, and one of them um, is the hypotenuse, and the other one is the leg of a right triangle. So we can show that ABD is congruent to CBE because of RHL and the three steps we need are the right angles which is step four and then we have the hypotenuse which is step six and then we go all the way up to number two for the AB is congruent to CB. Okay so in proof number two we are going to try to get CE congruent to DE. There should be little segment marks on top of that and also on PE. Okay so with that being said let's try to prove that those two triangles are congruent and if they give us PE as an altitude we can say that there is going to be a right angle form. So I went ahead and put a one and two in there because we can say that angle one and angle two are right angles because if a triangle has an altitude, then it forms right angles. Okay, 
So if we know the right angles, then we can say that they are congruent to each other, which will be our, our right angles. So we need R, H, L. We've got the first one accomplished. Okay, the next one, um, actually I need to write, finish this first. If two angles are right, then they are congruent to each other. All right, the next given is circle P, and anytime you have a circle, you're going to use the fact that they're all radii are congruent. So we can put that CP is congruent to DP because if circle, then all radii are congruent. Okay, so that's going to be PC and in the picture, uh, PD, they would be congruent to each other. And then also you can see that they are connected. So that reflexive property will be used for the next step. PE is congruent to PE. And then that's going to be because of the reflexive property. And we have just accomplished all of our congruent parts because if these are congruent, you've got right angles, you have hypotenuse here, and you have a leg. So we can say that triangle A, or no, triangle P C E is congruent to triangle P D E because of R H L. And what we would need is step three, five, and six. Okay, but we can't stop there because we have to prove that the segments are congruent. And from a few sections ago, we know that CE and DE are the corresponding parts. So we'll finish it with CE is congruent to DE because of CPCTC. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the next one. And I would like you to push pause and do as much as you can with all the givens. So already the first given is going to help us with this picture. Um, if you fast forward to the proof, uh, for what we have to prove, we have to get that angle CDE is congruent to angle ABF, which would live in this triangle. So if we can get these two triangles to be congruent to each other, then we'll be able to use CPCTC. All right, so let's get rid of those for a second. Now, let's think of how to get those two triangles congruent. Well, like I said, the first givens already help you out because we have a same segment in here. So if we put that EF is congruent to EF by reflexive property, then we can use addition for the next step. We can say that AF is going to be congruent to CE because if same segment is added to congruent segments, then sums are congruent to each other. And because it is, because it is a addition property, let's, let's write down where we're pulling the information. And that would be from steps one and two. Okay, so then we've got one part of our triangle congruent. The next given, go ahead and write down. And that given doesn't really tell us much. We can't do anything with that given. So we're going to just make the tip marks in the picture. Okay, so the next two are very important because that's going to lead us to our right angles being congruent to each other. I'm going to go ahead and first put it in the picture. BFA is a right angle and DEC is a right angle. And if I go to my next step, I want to say that they are congruent to each other. So angle BFA is congruent to angle DEC because if uh, two angles are right, then they are congruent to each other. And if they are congruent, and we already have hypotenuse, which would um, be these two, and we already have a leg, which would be this one and this one, there's a little overlap there, we've got, we can prove the two triangles congruent because of RHL. So that would be the next step. So number eight, triangle B, FA is congruent to triangle DEC because of RHL. And the three steps we need are going to be seven, and then one of the givens, and then the other one would be three. 
Okay, so what do we have to do for the final step? We need to use CPCTC because C, D, E is here and ABF is here. So we can conclude this by using CPCTC. Okay, the next one I'm going to let you work on by yourself. Um, I will give you a hint that you are going to have to draw a segment in your original picture, and uh, then we'll talk about it in class. This concludes the lesson, but I do have a joke for you, and I wonder if you know what it means. I am six letters. When you take one away, I am 12. What am I? And the answer is... Dozens. It says, I am six letters, and when you take away one, I am 12. And there is the answer. See you tomorrow.